Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. I'm here today to continue working on my Alfred blocks. I'm calling these Alfred blocks Alfred's Garden stitch along because I am doing different backgrounds and similar bird shapes and wings, but I'm using my own stitches. And if you would like to follow along, you need the pattern from Forage by Lisa Mattock. And I have previous videos on showing what I have done, but I have not shown what Lisa, how she says to do hers in her book. So I work on wool and I am using Lisa's templates for the bird body wings and tails. And I've stitched on my own vintage trims and I've started off with 10 branches. I am doing 20 blocks and this block here, so we are going to follow this bird shape. And Lisa doesn't give the exact instructions for her what stitches to use for these. You look at it and you can try to follow her photographs, but I'm going to be doing something different. I would like to, I'm going to put this away. I would like to, for one thing, incorporate these evergreen branches and all of my branches will be a little bit different. And I've done this one already on camera. This is a, uh, a hand drawing. I want to do a dandelion. And then I love to do just different stitching pieces like this. I've been following what uh, Jennifer Clouston has uh, done on, she's done different things on camera, different stitching, like how she calls it freeform stitching. I'm going to freeform stitch using my own freeform stitches, I guess, but in her style. I love her style, Jennifer Clouston. So let's start by trying to do a dandelion. And I'm using, for the center of this dandelion, I'm using a Wonderfill Pearl Cotton Easy 31. Sue Spargo also has Easy 31. It's like a lime green. So I am I'll move this to the side and we can still put that there. I have threaded up a long length here already. I like to use a Milner's needle. I don't know if this one is a Milner's needle or not. I just know that it's long. It's about two inches long and it has a long, large eye for me to feed this pearl cotton through. This is, if I didn't say, I think it's a size eight pearl cotton. And we're going to be doing these, the dandelion shape with that. And I'm putting my dandelion, I'm putting my dandelion, uh, let's see here if I want this, do I want it in this center block or this center block? This might be, well, you know, okay, I am, hmm. well, this has to go around that way, this has to go around that way. Maybe I should just stick in there, stick it with it in here. So, because I work with wool, I... I don't want to have my starting point in the center. I want it on the outside. So I want to come out about here. And if I wiggle here, I'm on a movable TV tray beside my bed. So that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. I'm sitting with my feet on towards the floor, which is a first in a very long time. Okay, so let's take a good half inch bite to secure it and then another tiny little two thread 
bite to secure it. I hold, hold on that long tail, hidden tail, and then I pull slightly. So I'm, instead of a knot, I'm stuck like that. I'm not gonna be washing this blanket. I'm gonna be very careful with it, and it's gonna be, it is gonna be a lap blanket, but I'm gonna be, I don't want knots in here because with these loose weave, it'll come out, your knot will come out. So I'm going to ver I'm going to use the center of this hexagon as the center of my dandelion, but I don't want to come out in the center because if I keep going, I want to come out and go into the center because that way, and I'll tell you why in a minute, let's start with, I'm going to go longer longer than my hexagon. And I'm always going to go down. My needle will always go down in the center of my hexagon. And, oh, this is going to be difficult. I'm going to keep hitting that camera. Okay, so we are going to come up. And I'm just going to work opposite. I'm going to go go opposites. So I'm going outside of my hexagon and down. So I'm going to have longer and shorter stitches for my hexagon. So I'm just going to start with long ones going out from all of these six areas six corners. Oh, come on. Okay, I, I don't know how to do this on camera without making a wiggled camera. So I'm just going to come up this way. Maybe it'll help me. And always go down. Okay, I can't rest on here, I guess. Let's try hovering in the air. And down. And let's go some shorter ones. Let's go real short. Real short. See, that's the thing. OCD sets in and it has to be perfect. It has to be exactly the same. And I have to try to be not so regular with my stitches. Let's just kind of force them out this way. And down. So I'm, oh, let's do all six in the center. And let's go longer. Oh, this one is a little bit too close in the center. So let's just move over a little bit and go down. Oh, that'll work if I keep going like this. So a dandelion, I'm just going to use straight stitches. And <coughs> straight stitches, and then I'm going to put a French knot at the end of each one of these. We have a lot of dandelions here. At least I do. <laughs> There's everywhere. You go driving and it's in the meridians in the summertime. So you don't want to spray pesticides. So of course we're going to get dandelions. Because the wind comes and blows all these beautiful little seeds everywhere. Okay, so let's go s smaller on this side, one round of smaller, shorter. And I'm sorry if my camera wiggles. Some ladies were saying that it makes them dizzy. Well, it makes you dizzy, I understand, but I can't help it. That's unfortunately the way I am. I have to film. So here we are and let's I'm just going to continue going round and around and moving my, let's go shorter here. Those are two longs, 
So let's get a short one in there. So I wanted all of these two longs put a short in here. I wanted on this side the uh, the big focal flower, I guess, to be why a dandelion. I have no idea because I always I've seen them on Pinterest. I go on Pinterest every day. It's like my morning coffee, email, Pinterest, Instagram. My Instagram. I don't know how to get that thing set for me and my likes and my who people I follow because I get I don't get the people I follow even though they're billed and they're bill with a check mark so I can get their notifications I get them on at, during the day but on a list when I scroll home it's not there so anyway, I don't know how to do that. So anyway, I go on Pinterest. And Pinterest is an excellent source of inspiration for me, hand stitching. And because I'm on there every day, I get tons of suggestions. Okay, I'm running out of thread here. And can I do one more? Let's take this all the way to the back. Can I do one more? I'm going to do one more here. And when I finish off, oh, that's small. Okay, I'm going to take a small little bite, and then I take a longer bite through my layers of wool, and I'm finished pulling it tight, and I can cut this off. So now let's get our white thread. I'm using white pearl cotton. I didn't have any on my um, on my um on my rolls like this, so I had to go into my Sue Spargo cupboard and get this Sue Spargo Easy 06. I don't know if it's white, off-white, or what, but, and it's a, uh, how thick is this baby? This is a size five. I wanted a size five bec because I wanted my French knots to be bigger. So let's start with, I'm going to start in here. Oh, my husband's probably home. My door's not closed, and you're going to hear lots of barking. Oh, shoot. Anyway, I take a big, long bite, and I have a little bite. I better close this door. It's gonna be loud because Mila is very loud. Okay, and let's continue. And we're gonna do a, I'm gonna try a colonial knot here. I like colonial knots. If you like French knots, do a French knot. So my colonial knot is I arc up and my needle goes up, finger around, and then, oh, what am I doing? Did, I didn't even, oh, Jesus, sorry. I have to go in the, I have to go on the front. Okay, so where am I? Right here. Okay, so we're on the front of our design, which is where you should be placing your, front, your knots. So this is a colonial knot. I arc my, boy, is that ever high? Okay. Let's get this out of here. So let's do. Shh. I arc up and my needle goes up, finger around, and back down. And I'm going to go a little bit lower. Let's see if this is the right size. Okay, I think I'm going to have to let Jacques out because he is going crazy because my husband is home. Okay, out. Good boy. stuff. Am I going to wiggle the camp? Nope. Okay, so let's continue with all these. Wow, those are pretty big dots. Well, they're big dots, I guess, and I'm going to, I'm just going to stagger them and work on them staggered. So I arc my thread, my needle goes up, finger, around, down and I pull and let go and 
pull the thread through. Let's go here. Let's go arc up, finger around and down, let go and through. Okay, so I'm just going to do them now. And let me see the narrower ones. Oh boy, he doesn't listen. He's an old guy. <laughs> he just goes and goes and wanders around outside in the front and is going to get hit by a car if he doesn't watch out. So that's why we want him to come in. Okay, so let's, let's just alter. We're just going to fill up this. I like the dots. I, li I wanted to feel those dots as I as I'm feeling the different textures. I shouldn't have done that. You're going to get dizzy. And down. So French knots or colonial knots. Either one will do. I love doing, I love the, the motion of doing colonial knots. So arc up, finger around and down and pull. So let's just keep going around. And get all these done. And then I'm going to do varied shapes like Jennifer Clouston does around to make these beautiful stems. And it's just decorating with stitches. Am I trying to make a live scene? No, I'm just practicing stitches and it's something for me to enjoy looking at. Arc up, finger around and down and pull through. Okay, this is gonna be dizzy. I better hold it up in the air. Red camera. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Oh yes. Once you get the motion down packed for the colonial knots, then it's it'll work very nice for you. I love these dandelions, and then we're gonna have free flowing different lines with many different colors of threads. I have my lengths cut into short, short lengths. I cut off because I don't, as I told you before, I don't have um, leftover yarn, I leftover thread. I just use I seem to use everything I have, just like I don't have scraps. So when I, when I craft, I just don't. How is that possible? I don't know. I use every single piece. And the rest stays in the book. All my printing is in a certain spot. Okay, let's see, how can I make this? Uh oh. Okay. So these French knots are very pretty. So I'm using all the threads I'm going to be using in my stitching are different shades of greens and blues, aquas, turquoise, teals, in different, usually a size five or a size eight. Pearl cotton. So when we do at this dandy, this yes, this dandelion, we straight stitches in green, and then I do the French knots in white. It's 
See, sometimes I do them in the air, sometimes I do them on the pad. I'm running out of thread. always wanted to do a dandelion there's always there's lots of different ways of doing dandelions and if you look on Pinterest or wherever you get your inspiration from there's lots of different ways different stitches to do them but this is just what I'm going to do I wanted to try this one they have some with little seeds flying with thin threads I'm going to be covering my backgrounds with the just the meandering stitch similar to Jennifer Clouston. I wanted to do different stitches that are in her book. She didn't have that I saw any dandelions. So that's why I'm doing this from Pinterest. All my blocks will be similar because I'll have similar threads. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I, I'm going to finish off. So I'm going to take a little bite and then I'm going to take a long bite and I'm going to cut that off and hi Jack, you got let back in. Mm -hmm. Cut another length of that white pearl cotton. Flatten it out like a linguine noodle. And feed it through. Okay, so let's take a long half inch. Oh shoot, I came out all the way. Long half inch stitch. And then a small little bite. And let's go, where are we gonna go? Let's go somewhere in here. Some more colonial knots. I just love the repetitive twisting of the thread that, that I do with my, with the colonial knots. So everyone will get a favorite stitch. Some people just like French knots then go for French knots. It's whatever you like. This is what I'm doing. A little video diary of my stitching. So when I finally lose all of my marbles, my husband can turn on my playlist and sit me in front of a TV and off I go and I'll be happy. There we are. And full on the outside here when my dandelions get so when they that's called when they go into bloom the flowers and these are the little seed seed I don't know if you call them pods or little seeds that go flo floating around to create more dandelions but it's a beautiful little flower on a piece of On a, a beautiful piece of fabric. Look at how nice this is. I love that. It's bring me bringing the white in here. And I'm not drawing pictures with thread. I'm not painting with thread. I am just s stitching. Stitching is purely for the love of stitch. I live in Canada and for me, working on this wool, this is a, a, a very heavy, thick wool scarf from Prince Edward Island that my daughter-in-law brought back when she visited her family out there, her grandpa, her papa. Okay, let's get some more over here. Up, around, and down. 
and sometimes you really have to pull. When you get a bigger French knot, it's because this isn't pulled as tight as it could be. And I want it to look jagged. That's one of the, I don't know if you call it a problem, one of the quirks I have with the OCD is that everything has to be symmetrical and I'm really trying to not be symmetrical. Okay, so I sure hope I'm in camera. And we keep filling until we're satisfied with the amount of dots we have. And I want lots of dots. Dots flaring, fading out, I guess, is what I want. So, I just sometimes if my loop is too long, it's harder to do that. And you pull it, and that's how you get a nice, snug colonial knot. I love stitching. I stitch during the day, well, during daylight uh, when I'm working on a project, when the sun is coming in. If it's not sunny in here, it's a little bit dark, so it's hard to see. I journal during the day as well, and I crochet at night. Why? Because I can do mindless crochet while I watch my Brit box, my detective shows, my police drama shows. And it's because that's what I like to watch. There we are. have to I have a nice space so I want that nice thick space all the way around but then I have to fill in that space in the center whoa I know I'm wiggling and for the ladies that get dizzy I I'm sorry there because if I would have this is a size five thickness it's a thicker thicker pearl cotton. If I would have used a thinner pearl cotton, these little dots, French uh, colonial knots, these colonial knots would not have been as noticeable. And I do want them noticeable. So I have to fill in this do one more and then I have to tack one more and then I can tie off and get another thread. Okay, let's take a small, small bite and then a longer bite in between the layers of wool. So this is a wool scarf, if I didn't say. And I squeeze my thread so it's flat. And then I go through my, my eye of my needle and we have to anchor it again. So let's, let's start over here. So we take a long bite. And a little, little, oops, I don't know if I went right through. So let's take another little bite. Oh boy. And, 
Okay, let's go here. I'm trying to fill in in the center of that little, say if it's a half inch space, I just want kind of like a line of colonial knots. Don't tangle up, please. And where are we? This is where I am. your thread. Needle goes up, finger around, and down. I try to have as few steps as possible because my brain can't remember <laughs> more than groups of threes. <laughs> Groupings of threes. Arc, then up, finger around. I love how that's turning out. Very, very nice. So all my birds are going to be standing on a branch. Hopefully an evergreen branch of some kind. There are so many different species. So we can try to stitch up at least 10 different kinds. If there are more than 10 different, then I only have to repeat once. Each one will be repeated. So we'll have to wait and see what kind of stitching I do, what kind of needles I put on my branches. So this is block one. Lots of French dots, but I want it to kind of like puff out. Where am I over there? Sorry, I can. I know that this table is wiggling. It's a movable TV tray, and it is sitting beside my bed. I got a um, a clip with a very heavy metal spring grip alligator clip attachment holding my iPhone, and that's my four dollar iPhone stand. It's not from I cuts. It's my stand for my iPhone. It's got it at the dollar store, and. It's working so far. Where am I going to put this? Lisa was kind enough to send me a stand for my phone, but the way it works is my phone, my the phone is this way, and you can look, the camera is pointing, of course, down, and it's, it's um, arced over like a gooseneck lamp, and it falls down. So that's the reason why. So my my grandsons record videos standing up <laughs> straight at them. So at least it's getting used. And up and around. See, Sawyer says, Grandma, are you a YouTuber? I go, oh, yes, I am. I'm a YouTuber. I don't know much about the computer or the phone, but yep, I am a YouTuber. Wow, Grandma, that's so cool. Can I be a YouTuber too? Make a video of me. So I do. Whoa, sorry, sorry. Okay. Whoa. French knots, adding lots and lots of French knots. I go around. I gotta put a little bit more on that side. And it's a spaced out uh, spindly. videos too long 
because people have other videos to watch. Or not time to watch videos. Okay. What is that? That looks like a knot, but it's kind of twisting. Let's go down there, pull, and have a look back, and get one in here. So it's just a matter of filling them up. Oh, I love that. I want to do a, f uh, a few meandering stitches. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, stop admiring, and continue stitching. I love the look of hand stitching. I love doing hand stitching. This embroidery is so gorgeous. Okay, so just fill in the spots. So at least you get one line of joining French, I say French knots, but French knots or colonial knots, whatever you're doing. It's too far. We have to go closer in, so I have to go this way. Oh, come on. And closer in. Pull and through. I love that so much. Okay, I think I'm going to call that quits. Kind of fluff them. Okay, I love that a lot. Okay, I think that's great. Will I have more dandelions on other ones? I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to take a small bite and whoa, come on, and a longer bite. And okay, well, that one's going to go in the trash. Okay, let's see what I have here. So what do I want to do? I want to create, where's my book? Uh, that, I want to have some vines creeping. So I want to, I haven't done that line yet to go down. Let's just pick my, and what kind of a line do I want? See, I'm just going to do a, a, a stem stitch for the dandelion. There's many different, I just want to fill my backgrounds up like this. I think they're so, this is so beautiful. Different colors, different stitches. Love that. Okay, so that's what I have planned. And let's get my colors out. I don't want to use ribbon embroidery now, so let's get that little ball out. And start. I like using the different. Um, I'm going to just be using a back stitch right now, and we're just going to arc it, arc it like that. And let's start with. Usually, it's a darker green and a lighter green on top. So my greens are these size eights. Let's start with a small bit of this. I'm going to take, I'm going to say 12 inches. 12 inches of that. And let's take 12 inches of this one to start. And then we'll blend in some of these. So let's go with the lighter one. And take my long runner's needle because it's something for me to hang on to. Because it's so long, we'll see that might not be a good choice. And I don't want to knot this again. 
So let's, let's just, and I want to have my arc just going subtly like that down with a, and I'm going to start that arc here. I want it to go down from here. So because it's going to go there, let's go a long anchoring stitch. Uh-oh, went right through. And a small bite. You see how my thumb is hold, squeezing tight so I can pull that. And then let's go. I wanted, there's a space in here, so I want to come up. Right there. I want to do just a, a stem stitch, a stem stitch and an outline stitch. They mean they they look similar, very similar. The only thing that's different is do you hold your thread above the line or above your working line or below the working line? When I'm doing an arc like this, it's above the line. If I was doing it. <laughs> A circle a happy face this way I would have it below the line so I know my arc is going to be up so my thread is up that's the way I remember it if my my arc is up my thread is up so I'm just going to be doing a let's call it a stem stitch because we're doing a flower and I am just taking a bite and they're pretty big pretty big bites about a quarter of an inch away and then up where the last stitch went down. And I'm gonna do that for a little while until my thread runs out. So let's see, I'm gonna go here so I know my eye has to carry it this way. Just keep going until my thread runs out and I so I want my dandelion to be behind this branch so I'm just gonna go down and it looks like it's hiding behind and My husband's on the phone and he just talks really, really loud for some reason. So if you hear him, I apologize. And take a big bite until we use up this thread. Another one bite, I think, and down. Okay, and let's just anchor off this thread by taking a small bite and a long one to hide it. Cut that off. And let's load up this darker one. And so you're gonna see in my embroidery that I use different colors of thread. These are not leftovers. I had to cut them off from spools of thread just to get a little group like this. It's easier to select, they all match, so they'll all blend. And it's easier to just grab a piece of thread than it is to just think about if you have spools of thread beside you. So I'm gonna come up where, I, where my needle would come up if I was continuing to do that stitch. So I'm gonna anchor it with a long piece. And then I'm going to take a little bite. And, okay, I wanna come up, my thread is going to be on top, so I have to come up underneath, right there. Okay, and we're gonna continue with that same, here, let's go like this so I can see. So 
roll this up so I can hold it better and I can actually see where my, and I want it to be above that arc, see where my thread is going like this. Flowers change color in nature. And that's what's nice about this, selecting a whole bunch of different colors of threads like this and putting them together. And that way you can just grab one. And they blend, they'll blend into the background. But when you look at my block, I want my bird to pop. When you look at these other patterns, they blend into the background. I want to see the bird. The bird is the focal point. The flowers are candy. So the, that's why the, I chose this bright blue on this background. And then these colors, it's a complementary color that pops on top of that. Okay, now that I mixed myself up here, two more stitches, I think. And we get thicker going down. So I'm just... I'm going to it's thick going through this cotton. Okay, let's lay this down. Okay, I know this is my shape already, so I'm going to go down and I want to I'm going to use the rest of this thread to just go up a little bit. So let's go there. And how am I going to do this? I'm just going to arbitrarily lay. I have to do stab stitches like this so I can see where I'm painting it or how I'm going to be coloring it. So I'm just going to be making my stem thicker as I go up. So I take a big, big straight stitch and then I'm going to go, it's almost like you're doing an outline stitch, but I want to make them long. Well, I guess it is the outline stitch here like this. So let's go along and then up. So it is an outline stitch that I'm doing like this, making it a little bit thicker, but my stitches are exaggerated long. I can only do one more. Okay. Very nice. So I'm going to have to get a different thread. So let's cut this off. That, or not, what am I talking about? Let's go take a small bite and a longer bite to anchor it in the thread. And I need to get more green. So let's see. Let's just get a little bit more of this moss green. Let's get this one. Oh, that's a, a um, I can feel that it's a wool thread. So let's get this because it's a little bit thicker and I won't be able to thread it. So when I thread a wool, I make it go around the, the eye of the needle, pull it really tight and my nails are super thin. So I'm able to stick it in the eye hopefully shove it with my fingernail and pull. Okay, this is a small piece. So let's continue here. I'm gonna anchor that with a bigger bite. I will be backing these pat pieces. I'll be mounting them on a piece of wool or a piece of fabric. I haven't quite decided yet what I'm going to mount it on. Okay, it's, oh, let's hold it and pull wool. Wool tends to rebound and unknot. So I'm going to give it two little bites here because wool likes to rebound and untie. So that's why I did that. So let's go, let's move our threads towards the stem and come up here. And we're going to continue making those really long 
stem stitches. And you see I'm I'm going it's my line is is arcing like a happy face. So I don't know how to explain it. So my thread goes underneath on the outside of a circle. So if my circle is this way, my thread would have to be up that way as well. So I guess that's a good way of explaining it. And I don't want to cross over that, so I am going to try to take my bite and go under. And we are going behind the branch. Okay, perfect. And our, if this was forming a big circle, the thread stays under, out of the circle. So that's why it's underneath and we're going to take a nice big bite. And continue probably all the way up to the tip. I like the double color of the green in the stem. Okay, yes, I can take a, another stitch and then a final one. And I have some extra thread. So what can I do in this dandelion? Can I... few more of these straight lines in here. It's a little different color. Will you see it? I don't know, but we're going to put, use up my thread in the center here. So I'll have four different lines coming in. They, oh, uh oh, just about got out the last ones. So I have four little stab stitches, straight stitches going in the center. So your eye kind of picks up that moss green. Okay, there. Short stitch and a long stitch to hide it. And that's all I'm going to do today is this little piece because we are already at 52 and we only did that little bit. So thank you everyone for watching and when I come back the next time we will be working some of these meandering little strands using using what? What am I using? Uh, hmm. We'll be using something. We'll be using something. Something, different threads like this. I love these stitches. I just love them. So thank you everyone for watching. And whoopsie, look, I covered all for that. Bye for now.